Thank you, ma'am. Very good. Good singing, both of you. And all who were singing. Turn with us in your Bibles, if you will, to the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew. We're down to the 11th of the uh, Kingdom of Heaven parables. Uh, you remember last Wednesday we talked uh, uh, in chapter 22, we talked about the uh, uh, Kingdom of Heaven likened to a king uh, who um, uh, prepared a wedding for his son and he sent out his servants to the uh, to bid the guests to come and uh, they would not and uh, then he uh, and we said this parable actually goes back further than all of the other kingdom of heaven parables it goes clear back to uh, we could say Moses and the prophets uh, who uh, first come preaching Christ and um, and then um, uh, later John the Baptist when he sent him out a second time and uh, uh, invited him to come and the kingdom of heaven is at hand but uh, they didn't heed John and uh, then we come down to the apostles he said go into the house when they when the uh, servants reported that they had gone and that uh, there was still room he said uh, you know he sent out the apostles they um, uh, killed James stoned Stephen and so forth and um, then um, um, after the king was angry and destroyed those servants um, uh, he had the wedding supper he found an uh, individual there without a wedding garment on and uh, uh, of course uh, he was cast out and uh, if we come down to chapter 24 of course all of you know what chapter 24 is it's uh, uh, the sermon there where the three disciples asked the questions when shall these things be what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world and uh, chapter 24 deals with that uh, it's interesting when we come to chapter 25 chapter 25 starts with then uh, and the obvious question is when and uh, uh, then shall the kingdom of heaven be like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom and five of them were wise and five were foolish they that were foolish took their lamps and uh, took no oil with them but the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps and while the bridegroom tarried they all slumbered and slept and at midnight there was a cry made behold the bridegroom cometh so go ye out to meet him then all these virgins um, arose and trimmed their lamps and the foolish said unto the wise give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out but the wise answered said not so lest there be not enough for us and you but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves and while they went to buy the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut afterwards came also the other virgins saying lord lord uh open to us but he answered and said verily i say unto you i know you not watch therefore for you know neither the day nor the hour when the son of man cometh and uh, then he immediately goes into the 12th uh, parable uh, that of the talents there uh, and um, uh, I guess I have read probably more commentators of what more commentators has to say about this particular uh, uh, parable than, than any of the others um, uh, actually uh, if we go back to the uh, uh, last one this one and uh, then uh, the uh, um, one to come uh, all pretty much deals with the same event there uh, uh, the then uh, it's interesting uh, uh, for about as many commentators as they are writing on it there's just about that many different interpretations of it uh, uh, probably the most uh, um, believed I guess would be the word the most taught one would be that of course the five wise virgins are the um, uh, 
make up the bride of Christ, and they're waiting for the bridegroom. You remember last week we uh, shared with you uh, the uh, uh, three steps in a Jewish wedding. Uh, the first step is the legal, uh, usually arranged by the parents without the bride or groom even yet meeting each other. The parents uh, make up all the arrangements. They declare who the groom is going to marry, who the uh, uh, the bride is going to marry. Uh, they will receive their dowry, uh, and um, uh, then the wedding will be set. Uh, that's the first step of the uh, wedding, and uh, it is it's called the legal part. The second part of the wedding is that uh, when it's time for the wedding, uh, the bride may have, uh, the groom may have not even met the bride at this point, or vice versa, but at any rate, the groom will leave his father's house, his parents' house, and they will go to the house of the bride, and they will fetch the bride and they will bring her back to the father's house where the marriage will be, a uh, date will be set, the feast, and so forth. And that's the second step. And then the third step is uh, the actual wedding itself, usually uh, lasting uh, as much as seven days. Uh, there'll be the wedding and then there'll be a feast and uh, all who are invited to the uh, wedding uh, gets to come and uh, be a part of uh, the celebration there. And uh, one uh, writing I read, they said that uh, when all the, when the last guest that's been invited arrives, uh, once they come in, the door is shut and nobody else is invited in until um, the feast is over with. Uh, the door is closed and uh, no one is to come or go during that uh, feast, which sometimes will last up to several days. Uh, and uh, so with kind of that in mind, uh, uh, let's look at the characters we have here uh, in chapter uh, 25. Uh, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto, this is what it's like uh, in the kingdom of heaven. When a marriage is taking place, here is what it is like. Uh, the ten virgins, uh, there is debate on who the ten virgins are. Uh, as I said, probably uh, most believe the ten virgins to be uh, uh, make up the church, uh, which is the bride of Christ. Uh, and consequently, the five foolish are those who have been truly born again, uh, who have been baptized into Christ and uh, are genuine born-again Christians. Uh, the five foolish would be like the tares, etc. That's one belief, uh, uh, certainly not the only belief. Uh, but anyway, five of them, here we have the ten virgins, five wise, five foolish. Uh, each one are awaiting the coming of the bridegroom. Um, now, you know, are they waiting for the bridegroom to come and get the bride, or has the bridegroom already come and gotten the bride, and they're waiting for the bridegroom and the bride to pass by on the way to uh, the bridegroom's uh, father's house there, uh, in which case, uh, as a pass along the streets there. Those guests that have been invited will uh, come out and uh, follow them uh, to the festival itself. At any rate, there are uh, five wise and five foolish. So the five wise, as you uh, all know and uh, uh, feel like, you know, that I'm uh, uh, not that um, um, feel like that I'm telling you something you already know, uh, uh, and certainly you do, but then again, uh, Peter taught what he, uh, what his people already knew to them. Uh, but anyway, we have the five wise, we have the five foolish, and um, uh, when we consider these ten virgins here, 
Notice there is some responsibility. Each one of them possessed their own lamp. Each one possessed their own oil, as much as they had with them anyway. The five, and the thing is, each one of them is responsible for making the proper preparation so that when the bridegroom comes, their lamp will be lit and they will be able to go out. Now then, there are differences of opinion. I don't know how many of you might be familiar with Origen, O-R-I-G-E-N. He lived from 185 A.D. until 253, I believe it was, A.D. And he was probably the most prolific writer of the early founding fathers there. And he believed that the oil is the deeds that was the work that they did. In other words, the five wise virgins were wise in the sense that they prepared for the wedding. They was ready for it. They were waiting. They were watching. And when the bridegroom come, they were ready to go. Luther would probably more would agree with Luther today. But Luther said that the oil is the symbol of the Holy Spirit and that the oil there represents the Holy Spirit. Now, actually, that creates a problem for Luther's doctrine. For if the oil is the Holy Spirit, then all ten of these virgins had the Holy Spirit living within them. All ten of these virgins were at one time saints of God, but five of them had become neglectful and allowed the oil to go out. And they come to the five wise and give us of your oil. Uh, the five wise may sound selfish, but actually, uh, uh, if it be the Holy Spirit or whatever uh, it be there that uh, is the uh, ticket that gets us into glory, none of us have uh, uh, enough to get ourselves and somebody else in. In other words, the wise virgin said, not so, lest there be not enough for both of us. They realized that they could not uh, have uh, uh, what was necessary for their salvation and uh, for somebody else to come in on their coattails. They said, go and buy. Uh, and uh, some would say, well, where did they go buy it? For if the oil is the Holy Spirit, you can't buy the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so that kind of uh, puts a, uh, a question there, uh, uh, how does this work, and so forth. Uh, if you turn, and I hope I can find it right quick, I believe it's Psalms 45, verse 6, I think it's, no, verse 14. Uh, if you turn to the 45th chapter, if you would, of Psalms, and I'm certainly not teaching, uh, uh, I'm not teaching anything, I'm going to share with you uh, uh, what we should, uh, how we should relate to this when I get done, because uh, Luther is uh, so much wiser than I am. Origin, uh, Psalms 45, chapter 45, uh, and look at verse 14. Now, the whole 45th chapter of Psalms is giving praise and adoration to the king, uh, uh, to the king's son there, uh, and um, he even speaks of the queen there, and uh, the king's son here, of course, would be Christ in this case. But look at verse 14. Uh, let's look at verse 13. The king's daughter is all glorious within her clothing, is of wroth gold. She shall be brought unto the king in remnants of needlework. The virgins, her companions that follow her, shall be brought unto thee. Now then, 
Of course, G, the church, is the bride of Christ, uh, and Christ is going to present the church unto himself, and him being God, that means he's going to present us to the Father. And uh, uh, here, the psalmist seems to indicate that uh, uh, along with the bride, there are virgins following her. And so one viewpoint is that the uh, foolish virgins here are not the bride to be. Uh, they're not the bride. Uh, they're consequently, they're not the church, but they are virgins who are following the bridegroom has gone and gotten his bride to be and is on the way to the father's house and as they pass by uh virgins that have been invited to be uh, maidens to the bride there uh picks up and follows after her uh, or after them to the father's house when they get to the father's house uh they are received in uh, because they are there and they have their lamps burning. Uh, uh, the five foolish virgins are a part of the virgins that were uh, planning to go, that hoped to go, but uh, uh, had to go into town and buy uh, their gold or buy their uh, uh, oil. And later we find that they too will come knocking at the door saying, let us in, and uh, the bridegroom will say, I know you not. Now then, what is the uh, true, uh, what is it that Jesus is trying to teach us here in conjunction to what the kingdom of heaven is like? Remember, the kingdom of heaven is that period of time between uh, Pentecost and um, uh, the uh, uh, when Jesus comes for his bride, uh, what is going to happen throughout this 2,000, perhaps 3,000, or ever how many years God may have on his calendar there, but uh, it's what is happening in uh, uh, the realm of Christendom. Uh, Christendom meaning the genuine Christians as well as the uh, uh, the tares or the bad fish or the uh, um, um, Jonathan went blank there uh, but um, uh, in other words uh, up until uh, uh, that time uh, the church is made up of both uh, uh, good and bad and uh, uh, genuine and uh, tears and so forth. Uh, um, and I say the church, the church is just a part of Christian. The true church is not, uh, the true church is uh, true. They are like these wise virgins. They are prepared, uh, they're watching and they're waiting. And uh, when it comes to what is Jesus teaching here, uh, Lochner, I think, has a uh, good closing on his part, uh, and that is he says there that uh, because in any given parable, no parable, uh, everything mentioned in it, whether it be every character, every event, everything, uh, is uh, not the gish of the parable, but merely material within the parable uh, for the parable to make sense. In other words, uh, uh, sometimes it can be vain trying to figure out the then, trying to figure out the oil, uh, uh, trying to figure out uh, the virgins, uh, who the five wise and who the five foolish are. Uh, one commentator uh, mentioned uh, the fact that uh, his problem he had with the fact that the uh, uh, five wise virgins was the church and the five foolish virgins uh, uh, were foolish virgins uh, was a fact that uh, 
uh, that depiction uh, doesn't match the biblical uh, picture of a virgin and um, uh, so forth. So anyway, Lochner in his um, uh, closing words, he points out this, in every parable there is a truth that is uh, being taught and uh, the various characters, the various events and so forth in any given parable is simply there to uh, present the truth of what the parable is all about. So what is Jesus saying, the kingdom of heaven? What, what is the truth that Jesus uh, uh, is teaching here concerning uh, the ten virgins? Whether they be uh, a mixture of the church, if that's what you choose to believe, and a mixture of the tares, whether they be uh, uh, the bride-to-be, or whether they be virgins uh, who are invited to the guest, uh, uh, whatever your viewpoint might be of it, um, uh, he suggested this, that the gish of the parable is found here in verse 13, I believe it is. Uh, notice in verse 13, he says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man uh, cometh. Uh, for the kingdom, well, then we go right into that next parable there. Uh, if you turn over just back up one page, uh, look at verse 42 in chapter 24. We're in chapter 25, verse 1, uh, right after uh, the last verse of chapter 24. We have then the uh, parable of the wise and foolish virgins. If you notice here, uh, after Jesus uh, closing out uh, his uh, commentator here, uh, uh, answering the disciples' three questions, uh, he says there in verse 42, Watch therefore, for you know what hour, you know not what hour your Lord does come. And that the uh, true lesson of the ten virgins is this, that uh, we're to be watchful. We are to be prepared. We are to be responsible. Uh, so that when... Uh, we hear the bridegroom cometh. Uh, as some believe, he's talking here about the rapture. Uh, uh, when we hear the bridegroom cometh, it's too late to get ready. It's too late to prepare. Uh, and uh, if we haven't been responsible at that moment, uh, then we are going to find ourselves shut out as these five foolish virgins did. So however you interpret the uh, who the virgins are and uh, what uh, uh, how the five wise and five foolish differ from each other and what the oil means, whether it's the word or whether it's the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, instead of trying to ascertain what each and every aspect of the parable might mean, uh, get the truth that the parable is teaching. And the truth is, we need to watch therefore. We need to be ready. We need to be prepared. Each one of us are responsible for our own uh, uh, preparedness. Uh, uh, and um, each one of us are responsible for doing or being uh, that servant of God who hears the call and uh, is worthy. If we go back here and we read uh, verses of, in, in chapter uh, 24, uh, read the last uh, uh, 10 or so verses of chapter 24, uh, Jesus is teaching concerning the fact that some are ready, some are lost, and in reality, that's what he has taught down throughout the kingdom of heaven parables. Uh, the sower that went forth to sow, uh, the seed fell on the same, uh, you know, the, the, the same seed fell on the same soul. The problem of it was some would not hear. Uh, some uh, 
while they heard and sprung up with joy uh, when tribulations and trials come, uh, they withered. Uh, some fell among thorns uh, and uh, got caught away with uh, the cares of this life, other riches, the lust of the flesh, and so forth. Uh, the uh, cares uh, and the uh, uh, the uh, uh, good seed and the bad seed, uh, the good fish and the bad fish. Uh, uh, all of these kind of tie in together. During this period of time, we who make up the bride of Christ have a responsibility. We ought to be ready. We ought to be watching. Paul said in St. Timothy chapter 4, uh, there in verse 8, there's a crown of righteousness which the righteous judge has laid up for me but not for me only, but for all of those who love his appearing. He tells Titus uh, there in, in uh, chapter 2, verse 13, uh, uh, that we're looking for that glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So read the, uh, uh, the 11th parable there. Uh, interpret it however, uh, they give the characters whatever title you choose to give them. But know this, that you have missed the true meaning of the parable if you fail to understand it. The whole dish of the parable is this. We are to watch, for we know not what day or hour the Son of Man cometh. Father, we thank you, Lord uh, God, as we uh, study, as we pray, God, as we listen to the viewpoints of other great men of God and uh, Lord Father uh, uh, gave uh, Lord uh, a way to what each one of them said, but ultimately uh, Father realized that uh, uh, if we miss, that we need to be prepared, we need to be ready, we need to be watching, then we miss the true meaning of the parable. So help us, Father to make preparation, to know that we're ready. Our lamp is trimmed. The Holy Spirit is flowing in us. We're living by the word, and we're waiting, Lord, for your coming with expectation, God, even with excitement. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and love, and thank you for your word. Thank you for your warnings. Father, may we, uh, God, may we take heed and uh, be among the wise that are invited in. Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Another uh, point that kind of uh, gives uh, uh, maybe uh, you can turn it off if you want. Uh, that uh, 